<laughs> well, I appreciate you, Jeff, and uh, I appreciate your service and the service of a lot of journalists around the world, including a lot of those who we've lost this year. And so, um, if, if you're hearing my voice, uh, keep after it. Uh, we can we can do better uh, as a plan. So I appreciate it. No, thank you. Patrick Claiborne of the NFL Network. You can catch him uh, daily uh, throughout uh, the NFL schedule um, and through the NFL Network schedule, that is. Um, thank you, man. All right, we're going to go from uh, Los Angeles up Interstate 5 to the great city of Seattle. Uh, Renaissance man is waiting for us. We're a little late getting to him, but uh, he is uh, fantastic, ready with his guitar. He's the Renaissance man because he's a musician. He's a reporter and an activist. He's Mark Taylor Canfield. And he says hello from Seattle, WA, right now. I love that yellow guitar, man. That was my punk yellow guitar. But anyway, hey, Jeff, uh, it was always great being on your show. That was an amazing segment we just saw. But I wanted to mention really quick, we have a a major strike here in Seattle. The machinists, you know, they they have Mm -hmm. at least postponed the strike on the East Coast at the ports. Uh, which we've seen on the West Coast in the past too. But uh, the machinists at Boeing here have been on strike uh, for about a month or so, so now, and they are uh, are costing the <laughs> company a lot of money. The latest estimate was about a half a billion dollars has already been lost by the company um, during the strike. Uh, the CEO has um, ordered a hiring freeze. They've cut the top um, CEO's um, the, or the top management salary by 25% and they're doing two week furloughs on people. So it's been a big story up here. I know the East coast uh, strike on the ports that really, you know, shut things down was really um, getting all the news coverage, but we still have a major strike here and it's not unusual, Jeff, this, wow. the machinists union in Seattle is incredibly powerful and they do this every few years, whenever there's a contract re- renegotiation, if they don't get the pay and the benefits that they, you know, think they're required to live a sustainable life in Seattle, where it's getting expensive, you know, then they go on strike. So our congressional delegation, uh, Democrats, of course, all went and visited them on the on the picket line. So they've kind of that's, that's uh, made their statement. Yeah. Great to Jaya Paul and and, uh, and and Delbini and the rest of those folks there, um, they, you know, to do that. That's that's fantastic. Patty Murray, of course, and and the rest of them. I I just think that uh, you guys can lead in so many ways with the first ones, with the minimum wage, uh, what CTAC has done, uh, and so forth. So uh, you know, kudos to the great people uh, and your great city, and you know, unions deserve uh, deserve increases. They deserve a better a better, uh, safer place to work. Um, and you know, these are not easy jobs. These are a lot of, uh, heavy, heavy equipment, a lot of fast moving equipment going back and forth. If you're not, you're not watching at all, uh, you know, every minute, you know, you could very easily get injured in the, in the, uh, activity going on at these ports. So it's, it's great. So good for the machinists. Um, obviously we want, you know, everything to be done in a nonviolent way. People can get very excited in these times. But it's uh, it's a critical, critical time, um, you know, for for us. Uh, again, you know, we're just talking with Patrick and, and our guests today, um, you know, have been understanding of the moment, Mark. And, you know, one of the things we never really have a lot of time and we don't have it today. But I, I want to give you the the idea because you talk about this all the time. You write about it is the protection of journalists and, um, you know, how important it is in America is middle of the pack. It's not, in, you know, not in the top five. And I think it's really important because we look at this fascist uh, threat that we have, that people yesterday we had on a comedian, Frank Santorelli. We were talking uh, today with our, our good friend from the Hill, uh, Bob Kuzak, the editor there. And, and people are concerned about the violence. Even President Biden said today, you know, it'd be a free and fair election, but we have no idea what's going to happen. And this to me is insane. In a democracy as old as ours, that this is what is the current situation. Um, and I think for journalists, you know, you and I are part of, it's it's that much more scary here in the U.S. right now. Yeah, I mean, it's a different world in, in the music scene. I mean, you know, I, I kind of admit I have to, I need some time off for my good times because there have been so many great house parties and shows and things happening here. But as a journalist, it's been a struggle because... Uh, by the way, Committee to Protect Journalists, Reporters Without Borders have done stellar work on these issues and they are really pushing the passage of the press act through the u.s senate that's 
an article that I just wrote lately too. You can see it, democracywatchnews.org. Watch uh, but Jamie Raskin introduced that bill. It passed the House twice. Uh, it never got past the Senate. And so there's been a big move to put a lot of pressure on the U.S. Senate, members of the U.S. Senate to get this uh, bill out of committee, get it on the floor and get it up for a vote because it's time. And what it would do is it would pass, it would provide a federal shield law to protect journalists from being revealed their sources in the case of whistleblowers and things. And, yeah. you know, we, so we as journalists can face subpoenas and jail time if sometimes if we don't give up that information. So it's a really important thing that will help improve our rating on the World Press Freedom Index, which uh, compiled by Reporters Without Borders, the United States is currently ranked 55, and we've had a steady drop on that ranking since 2002 when we were ranked 17th. So pretty much every year we've gone down, down, down. A lot of it is the control of corporate media, the media yep. monopolies that control everything here. But some of it is also this issue of not having a national shield law. Some states have it, but not on, it's not there on a national level. So I highly recommend that people pass the press act out of the U.S. Uh, Congress. It would be one step towards improving uh, the situation for journalists in this country and helping our ranking on the World Press Freedom Index, which is very important we'll to you. You just that. mentioned a story that you, you mentioned an issue that's very, very dear to my heart. And then I think about it every day and then I, I try hard to advocate for, and that is um, freedom of the press and issues that have affected freedom of, of the press in the United States and the lack of my colleagues to even talk about it or mention it on their own broadcast. So kudos to you for well, bringing I'll these tell things you up. yesterday, and I think you can appreciate this. So maybe this got limited time here, just about a minute or so. But the thing to me that's that's frightening is Frank Santorelli, who played uh, Georgie in The Sopranos, was on the show yesterday, and he's afraid to go on stage. There's a lot of stand-up, and he's great. Lenny Clark and many others that come in. The old J.J. Walker from Good Times, part of his a group of people that perform with him. He, he's afraid to talk politics because it's 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 just insanely – violent now. Um, and, and, and that's, you know, it, it's crazy. I, I love what Bruce Springsteen did yesterday. Of course, I love what Taylor Swift did. So your other world, your other life in the music profession, they're, they're taking stances. And I presume they both have gotten pushback, particularly Taylor. Um, and, yes. you know, and it's just crazy. It is crazy. And, and your quick thoughts, I got about uh, 40 seconds. Well, artists can't really censor themselves. When you're on stage, you need to speak the truth. So if you feel something strongly, you know, I support people's uh, right to criticize whatever. I think on left, right, middle, center, whatever, wherever you're at, you have the right to speak out. However, try to be responsible uh, and accountable for what you say. And that I think we're lacking sorely in the U.S. political discourse right now. I would like to see much more of that. I would too. Uh, be good, be good to people and be good to your community. And I think uh, that will carry the day. Mark Taylor Canfield, we'll bring you back next week, my friend. Rock on. I love that. Keep rocking. We'll talk. Keep rocking, man, in the free world. Neil Young, love you. Uh, Mark Taylor Canfield, check him out on YouTube. We will talk to him next week for the full half hour. Folks, busy show today. Thank you for hanging in there with us. We'll be back on Monday. Have yourself a great weekend.